Live from Mech in Austin, my name is Jeremy Chapman. And my name is Boris Paneja. So Barack, we've just released Service Pack 1 for Exchange 2013, and it's really a different release, right? We've done more than just cumulative hot fixes and bug fixes. That's true. So Service Pack 1 is generally the landmark release that customers wait for, you know, to start deploying Exchange. So this is deployment time. Let's get started. So we normally have four CUs in a year. This time we've actually got our all of the all the hot fixes, not, not only the fixes and the new features that we've released through those CUs, but also some of the updates we've seen in the service. Yes, that's right. So the way this works is we deploy these uh, updates in the service first. They get tested at a very large scale. It's truly mind boggling before they make it their way in the on-premises releases. And we'll talk about this and much more. And we've got something creative we want to do in terms of showing the top features in Service Pack 1. But before we get started, let's have a look at today's trivia. True or false, you can use Azure AD RMS against an on-premises implementation. So stay tuned for the answer at the end of the show. So Brat, things are a bit different in terms of how we think about Service Pack 1 because in the cloud, we do have a construct of just an evergreen service, right? Yes, always streaming in, updates so, are. So part of this means that from a service pack perspective, you know, we're, we're building some features that might take a bit longer than say our monthly or quarterly updates. Yes. So we are, we are holding back some things in terms of that milestone for the service pack, but from a cloud perspective, we've also changed quite a few aspects in terms of things like opting into a first release program. Yes. You don't have to wait as long as you used to have to wait sometimes you to get You can get, get some features. of these updates earlier. So it does mean that things like OA for iPhone, for example, OA for iPad, those types of features can come Came out without, the service first. Yes, yes, without waiting those two or three years sometimes. So the good news is, like you mentioned earlier, we're testing all this stuff at scale. That's true. With millions of seats on Exchange Online in order before we can ship these out into the service pack. That's right. So a couple of core facts around the service pack. I think these are pretty, pretty exciting for people. Yes. One, we've aligned all of the dates, right? The RT did, yes, we have. The RTW is being um, uh, released to web, so that's where it's going out first. And it means that we also we released SharePoint on or SharePoint uh, Service Pack One, as well as the Exchange. client Service Pack, as well as any updates to Link, as well as uh, Exchange, that's all on the same date, which was an engineering feat in itself. We, as always, issue security, performance, stability, stability fixes. improvements all the time. They just keep on streaming in, and of course. This is the cool part about this particular service pack is we're also doing new functionality. New functionality is included. So typically you uh, thought of service packs as you know, just a bunch of fixes. Now you see feature re being released in service packs as well. Right, but instead of talking about all of this, we thought we would show all of this in action by doing a top 10. Yes. So why don't we, why don't we move to our chairs, demonstrate okay. all these things, show all the different architectural changes around service pack one. Let's take a look at the top 10 features in Exchange 2013 SP1. All right. Drum roll. I'm going to wait for the numbers. We're counting down. So number 10 is public attachment handling. Now, organizations have a lot of concerns uh, with attachments because people are accessing email now everywhere using OA or browsers and so on. And uh, you want to be able to control whether your users can save those attachments on any computer that they walk up to, whether it's a public computer or a private computer. Now, public attachment handling lets you do that. So you can set it up on your organization to detect um, whether a computer is public or private. And then you have policies that you can assign to your users to allow them to do either you know, save or preview in the browser only or not do either. So kind of what we're seeing here, the ability to lock down attachments to people on the intranet maybe and block them if they're on the internet based on kind of the IP addresses and namespaces, yes. right? Yes, that, that would be the typical implementation, yes. Very cool. So how about the next one? I think we've got number nine. Number nine is an exciting new protocol, MAPI HTTP. Now, you're familiar with Outlook Anywhere. Uh, we've moved to using just RPCs, which used a lot of ports. 
to using Outlook Anywhere, which goes over RPC over HTTP. So you had HTTP, you had RPC on top of it, and you had Mappy being spoken with Exchange and Outlook. Now we've removed that RPC layer in this new protocol. The good news is you can implement this side by side with your traditional Outlook Anywhere in 2013 SP1. The benefit is more reliable connections. So today we turn off our, you know, we, I just shut down my laptop. I, I don't put it to sleep, I just shut the lid. And I expect that when I open the lid and have connectivity again, that it's going to instantly connect. So that these kind of network scenarios is where Mappy HTTP is going to help you. Very More reliable cool. and uh, very tolerant of uh, different network connections. Very cool. So even beyond all of that, our number eight. Drum roll. Number eight is hybrid config in, and multi-forest support. So uh, customers moving to our Exchange Online or Office 365 service can be in a hybrid mode where they have some mailboxes on premises, some in the cloud. And they can be in this mode for a short time of transition or they can perpetually operate in that manner where they have some mailboxes on premises. Right. Now customers, large customers particularly, who deploy exchange in multi-forest, multiple active directory forest uh, scenarios, they couldn't move to this hybrid deployments because of these multiple forests. So now we've gone ahead and enabled this so that the dirt sync and everything is going to happen between multiple active directory forests onto the cloud. It used to be very difficult if you use things like uh, Forefront Identity Manager or FIM, you could get some of these things to work, but it really was a handful of people on the planet that could get all this working. That's true. Now it's all well documented and all built in. Yes, and much, much easier and faster. Right, so beyond that, we can get not only multiple forests working, but we can also do our number seven in our top 10 list. So number seven is a bunch of encryption, two encryption uh, or security enhancements. Number one is S-MIME. So you want to be able to protect or allow your users to protect messages using a certificate or a smart card. So this allows you to do S-MIME encryption in OA and also digital signatures. So that's number one on encryption. Uh, the other thing is uh, we've got now uh, support for Azure AD RMS. Now, when we implemented this uh, RMS as a service, you have experience with uh, RMS on-premises in large organizations. How does that work right. out? Right, and sometimes it means that I've got to build 10 or 15 or 20 servers, but with using Azure AD RMS, connecting that to on-prem, it's a few mouse clicks away in terms of getting RMS, maybe something I've been putting off for the last 10 years to deploy. There we go. Because it's so much easier now. See, so when we took this rather complex implementation, and put it in the cloud, because that's where the strength is. It makes it so easy, right? And if you go to Office 365 dashboard today, and you wanted to use it with Exchange Online, it's a single click that says activate. Now, customers saw this and said, we want this in our on-premises deployments. We don't want to set up RMS servers on-premises. Right. We want to use the service. Super easy. I think you can implement this in 30 minutes. Probably, so our number six. Drum roll. Number six is kind of exciting for a lot of people. If you do high availability, if you do DAGs, and if you're on-premises, most customers do that today, simply because DAGs are now so easy. Now, historically, clustering required, let's say, for example, you have two servers, they have their own IP address and their name, uh, and the cluster has its own IP address and a name. Now, we removed that requirement, because Windows Server 2012 supports clusters without that, uh, cluster IP address and network name. So now Exchange supports that too. Uh, big benefit, it's simpler deployment, it's easier deployment, also reduces uh, attack surface. You've got one less IP address, one less name in the DNS. It's just better to do it that way. So better support in terms of DAGs. Even yes. beyond that though, our next number five. So number five is, you probably heard about um, cache mode OWA where Outlook Web App, you know, in browsers that support it, Internet Explorer, you can turn network off and you'll still be able to um, read your email because it's all cached in the browser. Right, so it'll cache it locally because the nice thing with HTML5 is that we have the ability to, to retain state. Yes. Effectively, to retain the cache of that email. So if I am offline, I can go in and, and read my mail. I can maybe reply to mail on an airplane while I'm offline for those three exactly. hours during that international flight or whatever. 
when I land, once I reconnect, all of it that stuff sitting in the sent. outbox gets sent and out. And you get the new email in. So that cache mode support for OWA is now available across browsers. So here and I am showing it in Chrome. So even beyond, again, IE8 or IE10 or 11, if you're, if you're on a newer one, you'd be able to use, uh, you'd be able to use Chrome or Firefox or any so supported Safari. browser. The nice thing too here is that when I, once I set this up for offline mode, I can either remove my connection, and when we think about it, how we're implementing the OA for devices apps is the same thing. We're basically encapsulating an HTML5 container and then doing the same thing here. So here I've got, even though I'm disconnected, I don't have any connection with my network, I'm able to go ahead and see mails, even though my, my PC is in airplane mode. Yes, so awesome feature. Your users are going to love this. Right, so now even beyond all of that though, number four. Number four, let's wait for the drum roll. OAuth support, again, a great hybrid configuration feature. If you're trying to uh, deploy a hybrid deployment where, again, part of your mailbox or org is on-premises, one part is online and exchange online, uh, it required you to set up a federation, which got kind of complicated, okay? And that was seen as you know, a blocker by a lot of people. Like, why do we have to go through all this? So we removed that. We set, added support for a standard protocol-based authentication. It's the OAuth2 protocol. So cross-premises free business sharing, uh, things like cross-premises e-discovery. All these scenarios are now enabled using standards-based OAuth2 support. Cool. So a lot of security features we're seeing here as part of this top 10 that's, list. That's the big theme, yes. A lot of authentication work. Yes. But beyond that, number three. Number three is SSL offloading support. So a lot of customers want to deploy CAS servers, and they want to have the uh, SSL uh, work done by uh, devices, layer three devices like load balancers, hardware load balancers. So now in Exchange 2013 SP1, we added support for uh, SSL offloading to, to those load balancers. So is this ever available in previous releases of Exchange? Yes, it was, but it wasn't available in 2013 at RTM, and now it's back in in SP1. Now it's back, so SSL yes. offloading is back, but beyond that, to our number two. Number two is a couple of things. There is policy tips. So if you've used DLP, a very awesome feature that allows you to protect information in your organization, uh, Outlook showed these policy tips. For example, if you're trying to send credit cards or whatever, uh, it'll warn you based on settings that you configured, right? And it said you're send, trying to send out information that you're not supposed to. Going closer to the standards in terms of authentication versus federation, we're doing claims-based auth. Yes, so SP1 also enables ADFS claims-based authentication for OWA. Okay. So again, that's making all these deployments more secure and allowing you more flexibility in taking the kind of authentication and security approach that you want. Uh, you can use, for example, smart card auth with ADFS claims-based authentication support. Beyond all of that, though, our highlight feature of SP1, one of Before the coolest things. Before you move to the highlights, one more, drum roll was there already, but one more thing I wanted to point <laughs> out was it works in uh, OWA apps as well, the policy yes, tips. Yes, it does, it's, it's, so, and even, even the forthcoming OWA for Android app, the iPad, the, yes. the uh, iPhone app, all those will have the same thing. So number one, I think we need to rerun the drum roll though. <laughs> our favorite feature, go So ahead. number one is our favorite feature, which is, if you already use DLP, you're gonna love this, is document fingerprinting. Now what this allows you to do is take a document, put it in your uh, DLP configuration, it basically makes a fingerprint out of it. Let's say it's your 1040 text forms or whatever, right? And you want to fingerprint that. You put that document in there. It generates a fingerprint. Now, that document or any filled 1080 form cannot pass your organization based on the DLP. So we've talked about quite a few features. We've talked about all the different things around the top 10. A lot of them, again, very much related to security, compliance, privacy, all these things that, yes. that are very important and topical at the moment, especially as, as an exchange admin wanting to have the best mail service running, right? Yes, from mail tips to you know the uh, protecting your uh, intellectual property and so on. So yes, uh, very very good stuff. And I think I think the kind of the main point here is that with Service Pack One, we're able to do a lot of net new functionality. So you have not only the benefits of fixing and, and improving the product over time, but actually getting new stuff 
as yes. time progresses, which is pretty cool. It's pretty but, exciting to have all this functionality come in. All right, before we wrap up this show, though, let's have a look at today's trivia. True or false, you can use Azure AD RMS against an on-premises implementation. So, of course, the answer to that is true. You can use AD yes. RMS as part of one of our top 10 features, right? Yes, it is. And it's a single click. It's just truly so exciting. So you have to go out and deploy that and use it to see how cool it is. So all these things in Service Pack 1 are available now. They have been available since February 25th. Yes. We encourage everybody to try those out. Download SP1 and give it a shot. Really exciting to see all these features really come to life, sometimes in the span of just a few months from, from envisioning to coding it and to releasing it. Yes, it's all the cloud cadence. So, you know, accelerated updates and you're again seeing that at accelerated so pace So it means now. also whether you're online or on-prem, you're, you're really benefiting from the way that we're delivering Exchange Online in the cloud. Yes, not only are you getting these updates, you're getting this tested at scale in the cloud before they come to you on-premise. Right, and of course, all this information and more can be found on the Office blog every time we release new features and on ELO blog. And right? on the Exchange Team blog as well. So also on Garage Series, we come out basically every Wednesday with a new show. So everybody should be checking out those three different assets, the Office blog, the ELO blog, and the Garage Series at yes. Microsoft.com slash garage. What's the URL for that again? Microsoft.com Mic slash garage. Slash garage. So, All right, that's place. about all the time we have for today. Thank you for watching and goodbye for now. Thank you.